Good evening. Thank you, everybody, for come, for joining us for our public safety meeting here for the North, North, State, North St. Mary's Strip area. My name is Mario Bravo. I'm the council member for District 1. And um, I want to thank St. Sophia Greek, Greek Orthodox Church for welcome, wel welcoming us to their space and providing this to us this evening. I'm going to hand the mic over to Father Thomas to welcome us and share a few words. I'd like to thank you all for being here tonight and being a part of the community. Uh, we are a part of the community here and we'd like to make sure that we enable each one of us to have a voice and to hear each other's voices. It is the name of the church, Hagia Sophia, which is divine wisdom, properly translated. Sophia is wisdom and Aya is holy or divine. Is something that we share between all of us if we come together in one heart and one mindset. Uh, if I would, if you may, uh, stand for a prayer. Blessed is our God always, now and forever, on the ages of ages. O Holy God, O Heavenly King, O Comfort, the Spirit of Truth, who are in all places and fill all things, the treasury of good things and the giver of life. Come and abide us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, a gracious one. Thank you, Father Thomas. So uh, this is an amazing turnout. Uh, I think it lets us know that uh, these are issues that, that the community is deeply concerned about. And we've got a lot of people standing in the back right now. Can we get people who have an empty chair next to them to, sh to raise their hand one more time? If anybody wants to grab a seat, there's a bunch over here as well, right up front, if anybody wants to. Uh, okay. Um, I want to... There's also, there's, uh, there's water and snacks in the back of the room over there. Uh, we have State Representative Diego Bernal, who's joined us this evening. Uh, we're gonna have Chief, McM Chief McManus and City Manager Eric Walsh are on their way. He's here. Oh, outside. All right, so they're coming in here shortly. Uh, we also have a representative of uh, the Public Works Department, if anybody's going to have any questions uh, of the city when it comes to any of the construction and uh, progress over there. So, you know, when I first uh, decided to run for this office, I knocked a lot of doors in this area. And, uh, you know, and I heard from many of you uh, about concerns um, with a variety of issues. and. You know, when I, I just told my mother that I was coming over here for this public safety uh, town hall, and she said, you know, I knocked a lot of doors over there, and she wanted to tell me what all the issues are, and I said, I, you know, I knocked those doors too, and so I, we, between the two of us, we heard from almost every one of you, I feel like, um, and when I got in, and I told Parker Dixon, uh, the neighborhood president, I said, you know, when I get into office, or, you know, I promise that I will meet with you right away so we can start to address these issues, and we sat down and we met, and we met with a bunch of city staff, um, and we started looking at what are some opportunities. And uh, it's been a little bit slow going, but we've heard from you that you want to see some progress now. And so this is, this is an opportunity for us to refocus. I've heard from some of you that you didn't come to previous meetings that we had to talk about this stuff um, because you feel like some of these issues have been gone and ongoing and, and um, elected officials didn't listen to you in the past. Um, so we're definitely here to listen, but we're looking for to, to make this solutions oriented and see how we can make progress and you know get get going now. And so, if is the chief here? Okay. Uh, so why don't I turn it over to Parker Dixon and he can start? Do you want to start your presentation? Hi everybody, um, I'm Parker Dixon. Um, I was recently elected the Tobin Hill Community Association President. Um, I apologize about our website if anybody's gone to it currently. It is down and we are rebuilding it. So um, we'll have more information on the in the future on the website. Um, right now I'm gonna uh, present something about how, how the strip has impacted our neighborhood um, and I don't want to sugarcoat it anymore. Um, it has serious impacts on our quality of life, and uh, it feels like we haven't been listened to. And um, I think that we, everybody in this room, mostly knows what the problems are, 
Um, and I think the city has an idea what the problems are. So what I'm gonna share is some solutions that I've gathered through uh, the community association and through fellow residents. Um, and uh, whenever you, you do speak, uh, please don't be afraid to stand up there and speak your mind and share what you believe the problems are and what you believe the solutions are. Um, we can't get change without everyone speaking up and being vocal about it. Um, I'll start the presentation now. All right, so the purpose of this town hall is to discuss the problems and solutions to, uh, to the negative activity and violence emanating from the nightlife activity of the North St. Mary Strip. Um, some of the solutions I've gathered are a residential parking program, ride share program, food truck hours of operation and proximity to residential properties, uh, street trash pickup, noise compliance and abatement, and adjust SAPD strategies. Uh, the residential uh, parking program, uh, we need protection from nighttime commuters. Um, this will create the single largest impact for improving safety and quality of life for pedestrians, residents, and businesses. Uh, without residential parking, all the other solutions will be undermined. Um, the resi residential parking program benefits, um, they have support from the North St. Mary's Business Association, bar and club owners. Um, it enhances safety of pedestrians, residential properties, bars and clubs, SAPD. It reduces guns, because if you don't have a car, you can't have a gun. You can't bring it into the bar with you, it's a felony. If there's no car to retrieve your gun from, it can, in theory, reduce gun violence. Um, reduces drunk driving. We had a uh, drunk driver drive into one of our restaurant scenes. Um, we've had a drunk driver crash into the barrier at the end of our street. Um, my children sleep in the front room. I fear, you know, I, I park my car at the front of the driveway as just an additional barrier. Um, but you know you shouldn't have to live like that um, it alleviates the congestion of our narrow streets in Tobin Hill and on St. Mary's reduces noise on residential streets reduces trespassing and vandalism on residential properties improves crowd control and makes policing easier uh, the ride share program will work in combination with this it's where the future is headed downtown and near downtown areas are trying to reduce commuter traffic and encourage ride sharing and public transportation. Uh, all the benefits of ride sharing are the same benefits as residential parking. Uh, the benefits for business um, are it reduces liability, uh, it re reduces need for a parking lot, which we are very short on. We have almost no parking lots over here for the businesses. Uh, it increases profits with ride-sharing incentives through rewards apps like Freebird. Uh, Freebird links to Uber and Lyft accounts and uh, patrons receive rewards after paying their tab at a bar or restaurant. Um, and it shows good faith uh, the, the business, for the businesses that they're being a good neighbor and a, a good business for the entire city. Uh, the food truck operations, uh, the food, limiting the food truck hours, um, absolutely no sales after 2 a.m. It keeps people from hanging on our streets until three in the morning. The, the food trucks don't close until they don't have a customer. So you have people lingering until 3 a.m. and nothing, nothing really good happens after 2 a.m. And, and if you're not living in the neighborhood, it's, you know, you you're just loitering a lot of times on the residential streets because that's where you park. Um, and then they leave their trash right there at their car. So it'll help the decrease street trash um, and then restricting the food trucks from parking too close to residential properties. Um, a buffer of say 200 feet. There's some food trucks that are within 
70 feet of a residential property. So it's essentially you have a food truck in your front lawn. Um, and restricting food trucks parking where patron parking and traffic causes roadway congestion. We have some food trucks that park in road where the uh, their patrons are, are causing blockages in the roadway and residents can't even get out. Um, uh, street trash pickup. Uh, bars, clubs, and food trucks need to clean the entire length of the, the length of the strip plus impacted residential streets um, and cleanups occur every night after 2 a.m. Uh, noise compliance and abatement. Uh, outdoor amplified music along the strip has created an inhospitable environment for some residential properties. Uh, the most impacted residents are forced to sleep with earplugs or abandon the bedrooms nearest to the sound source. Uh, and in some extreme cases, uh, the homes have been abandoned, uh, either sold due to noise or relegated to being strictly an Airbnb. Um, in general, uh, noise uh, has also been scientifically linked to increased consumption and aggression. Uh, support all of the above changes to make patrolling easier. Uh, sorry, adjust SAPD strategies. Um, support all of the above changes, and it'll it'll make patrolling easier. Uh, more proactive patrolling rather than reactive, um, and think more ter in terms of crowd control, because um, four to six officers don't stand a chance against five to ten thousand patrons frequenting the strip. Uh, on any given night. Um, I don't know if Diego would like to take over from here. Oh, you want me to go anywhere? Yeah, come on up here. Um, Thank you. Uh, for those of you who I haven't met, I'm Diego, I'm the state rep for the area. Um, you're sort of asking yourself, why is the state rep up here? Um, it seems to be primarily city issues, but uh, for two primary reasons. The first is that I represented this area for close to a decade. I care about the neighborhood, I care about the people. Before I was in politics, I was a musician and I played on the strip for years. And so that place also holds a special place in my heart. And I believe that there's an opportunity that we haven't tried yet to coexist. What I did was I realized out of frustration that the reason why so many of you are nodding your head, the, the reason why you're all here, the reason you're concerned, is not really noise. I'm not saying that noise isn't a problem. Sure it is. But your concern is about safety. It's about gunshots. It's about violence. It's about the, the changing of your neighborhood. Noise, when you talk to people, when you talk to people, it's on the list, but it's not in the top three or four. And so what I did is I went to residents and I went to bar owners to try to figure out if there's something we could do today that would make a difference. I'm not promising that it'll work, but something that will change. And so I went to some of the bar owners and I said, because there's so many bars, I think there's 17. How do you know that you're gonna have a bad night based on something a different bar is doing? And they said two primary things. The first thing they said was Dollar Wells. Dollar Wells is a guarantee that people are gonna show up just to get obliterated. And that's not good for anybody because they spill out into the street and they go to the next bar, right? The second thing they said was when there's a night, not a ticketed concert event, but when there's a night for 18 and over, that's a recipe for disaster because those kids are there to make mischief. There's tons of fake IDs floating around and the rest of the bars have to then contend with that. And you know that they can't catch all of them. And so I said, why don't you try to get your association together? And we'll get to the security part in a minute. Why don't you try to get your association together and figure out if you can come up with some measures that you wish all the bars did that would make everyone's life better, easier, and for you guys, safer. And, and just, just to be clear, I know there's sort of a weird relationship between the bar owners and the neighborhood. There always has been, but they've also been able to coexist. I don't believe that anyone on either side is bad. And violence is not a good place. It's not a good place for you to live. I grew up in places like that. Up until years ago, I lived in Five Points. It's a tough place. And violence isn't good for business. 
Usually when there's a shooting outside of a bar or something, that bar is gone. It, it doesn't survive. So here's what they came up with. And I think you can see it, but if you can't see it, I'll read to you what they've done. Uh, and at the bottom of this document, of that document, you'll see the bars are signed on. And I want to be clear, some haven't signed on because they haven't had the chance, and some haven't signed on because they're not with this stuff. And that's a cause for concern. First, we will only admit guests who are 21 and over, except for ticketed events featuring live music. So no more 18 and over nights for these bars. There are some that didn't sign this, just so you know. No drinks under $3 on weekends, so no more dollar wells. No happy hour pricing after 9 p.m. Last call at 1.45. No guests will be allowed inside a bar after 1.30. So 1.30 is the cutoff. People have got to either stay there or go home. All staff will complete TABC training and is licensed to sell alcohol. All business will post signage prohibiting weapons of any kind. But here's the other part. And this chief can talk about this a little bit. Both, both primary law enforcement agencies in the city, the county and SAPD, they, their unions have elements in their contract that forbid them from being hired by bars themselves to work inside. However, this is the North St. Mary's Business Association, and they can hire off-duty officers. Now, to be clear, their experiences, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but their experiences, if you see Falcon Heights, Castle Hills, people don't respond. But if it's a CSAPD officer or Bear County Sheriff, they do. And so the association is going to pool their money and hire off-duty officers on the weekends, not only to patrol the strip, but I think it's two blocks over on either side because you're having these parking issues, you're having the situations where people are going to the bathroom in your, in your yard, knocking over trash cans, your kids are showing up holding a hypodermic needle that was left, et cetera, et cetera. So these are, this is what the business association is trying to do. We've been talking about it since January. It's, it's like herding cats, but um, as I admitted to someone else, we, we obviously didn't work fast enough, but I do think that these are not solutions, but certainly steps in the right direction. And so I, I think that if anything, there's something that's happened here today that is a step in the right direction and we'll see how it goes. But I do think that at a minimum, there's something here that generates, if not goodwill, some hope on both sides. Because I do think that it's important that we sort of maintain the community feel that we have in this neighborhood that I've come to care about so much. Um, I'm happy to take questions, and I'm also happy to pass it on to the chief or to Eric. Yes? Because I, I drive for Lyft and I take people home every day, uh, grouping together and uh, taking them to Lyft and the Uber instead of driving their cars, and that's great. So that, that's one thing that, you know, is in the same line about this TABC thing, educate people. Uh, information is, is a great thing when it comes to this kind of issue. People are you know, they run around, they don't know what to do. So they do whatever they think they should do, and a lot of times it's the wrong thing, and everybody's affected in this neighborhood. So. I think, it, I think it's a fair point, but I think it's, it's also, it's also important to point out that whether it's here or with the barners, I don't have a hammer or a button to push. I, I don't have anything to threaten them with. I just said it's, it's in everyone's best interest if we don't keep things the way they are and try to make things better. Um, passing a law in Austin is hard, and it would be a statewide law. So what might make sense for North St. Mary's won't work in Fredericksburg, so it's challenging. But I do think this is a good start, and I think your idea is a good one. Yes, ma'am. Loud enough. You, you start off this whole conversation with saying that the bars allow people to enter with illegal uh, 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 identification when they're not 21. And yet you start this whole entire presentation with the very first one that says, 
for the most part. So explain to me how, because that's a contradiction. I, and to begin with, that's sure, a conversation. Sure, I understand. I think the point is that there are some there are some establishments here that have nights that are aged in overnights. And so the first sentence is supposed to speak to the fact that the, the signed bars aren't going to have nights that are for anyone under the age of 21. The point I'm making about the point I'm making about having nights that are for people who are under 21 is naturally that lends itself to fake IDs. And 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 so if you're working the door at a bar, there's no way you're gonna catch all of them is the only point I'm trying to make. It's hard to catch them all. That's all I'm saying. It's sort of the human the human element makes it harder. So if you reduce, if you reduce, if you reduce even the opportunity to have that many fake IDs in one place by having people who are under the age of 21. Well, you also said two blocks this way, two blocks this way. I can tell you I live further than two blocks, and I've seen naked bodies right. in, in the middle of the night. Look, I, I, I am, I the by the way, I am not the rep for the I bars. Know, I, I know, just, I brought them together to try to, to try to do something positive for the neighborhood because all I kept hearing about was noise. And what you're talking about is not noise. What she's nodding no, her head about. No, I got is, noise too. No, I know, but but we're worried about safety. Well, that's just one on top of the parade. Right. So let's tackle what we can. Noise certainly being part of it, right? Parker had some good ideas about noise. I'm just saying that let's do as much as we can. Um, so and and nothing here is set in stone. If it needs to be three blocks or four blocks, you can talk with them. My understanding, Parker, is that some of those guys are coming to your community association meeting later in the month. And I think that's an opportunity to talk about those finer details. Um, so, I'm, not the, I'm not the author of the document. So folks, before we go any further, I just wanna make sure that we have news here. So we need to use the microphone as much as we can so that they can pick up the audio, okay? So uh, we're gonna do as much as we can to get this to you. If you can come up into an aisle or something, that might be helpful as well, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do, because I'm trying to be fair. I'm gonna go one, two, three, all right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I don't live in Tobin Hill. I live down the street in the Monte Vista Terrace uh, Neighborhood Association. My fear is the precedent that this is setting for our neighborhood areas. It is it's asinine that there are this many bars in a concentrated area within the neighborhood. And like Parker said, these property values are gonna drop, people are gonna be moving out, then we're gonna have vacant houses, Airbnbs, and the problem is going to get worse and worse and worse. Um, I think it's awful and that we're expecting the police to go in here and uh, what he said, there's like 5,000 to 10,000 people maybe on any given night, to ask our police to go in, police this situation when Anybody could be uh, toting a gun now and to say, oh, you can't bring a gun in here is ridiculous. We know that they're gonna be bringing guns in. And I don't want my taxpayer dollars that support our police going to police that. We need these police within our neighborhoods because the crime element and the criminal element is getting worse and worse with the homeless situation. I could go on and on and on about all the problems that this is causing and we need restaurants with maybe a open bar. We need restaurants that close no later than 11. And the city, I know there's some city managers in here, uh, this this is a policy issue. There needs to be an ordinance that's just like a school or a church where you, if you're a bar and not a restaurant, you don't get to be within so many feet of a residential area. These neighbors down here need help. And I don't want to see this happening in any of the other neighborhoods, mine included, because once those, uh, the corridors get done, it's just going to be open season. So I can't speak to all that, but the one thing I can speak to, I think, and I think you should also talk to the bar owners, is that one of the reasons why they want to hire off-duty officers is because the ones who are on duty certainly have to patrol, but if something happens, they've got to go somewhere. They, if they get called, they've got to go. So the, the off-duty folks would be dedicated to the area, but I, I understand you're saying more than that. We cannot police our way out of this situation. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. There it is. I, don't, I pray for my safe officer every night. I don't want her being drawn into that. I got you. Yeah. Well, he's next. Yeah, he's next, and I got you. So, uh, I guess my comment is that I think it's a little bit, if 
forgive me, I respect the position. I do think it's a little shameful that we have a state representative representing the Bar Association. I know you mentioned that you're not here to represent them. I'm not. But if you're saying that, that they're so great and they want to make amends with the residents, how come they don't have their own spokesman here? And wait, they, wait, 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 I hear you. you know, so, so hold on, so there's that, there's that aspect, you know? And I just think that, um, I understand that as, as far as elected officials that you're trying to make amends on how things are. And you play here, that's great, but you play here. I've been here for five years. My parents have been here 50 plus years. This year, these past year and a half have been by far the worst yes. that I have ever had. I mean, we have murders like almost every other month, and which is ridiculous. So my, my big thing is that I just find it interesting that we have a state representative here giving us uh, a possible solution, but yet the solution doesn't include all the bars. So, so it's kind of like, uh, let, me, let, me, let me address that. The it's, a fair, it's a fair <laughs> point. I only put it in. I only put it in because I wanted something to happen. Otherwise, what, what we'd be talking about. Otherwise, we'd be talking about what? I'm trying to bring something, bring people together, so we have something to work off of—a step, not an answer. The second thing is the reason why I'm uncomfortable talking about this is because the bars were asked not to come today. They were asked not to come. So because I worked on this, I'm sort of stuck explaining the process that we went through to start them with this. They, they, I did the first quarter of it, they did the rest. But they were- This is not a state issue. This is a, a city management They were asked issue. not to come. So that, city, that's why. City management. I'm glad that they weren't asked not to come, but the problem I did not invite them. I, I told them not to come so you guys could be comfortable to speak your minds. They don't need to be screamed at and yelled at. They've heard it all. I'm not trying to protect them. I'm trying to let y'all speak y'all's mind without them snickering in the corners of the of the room at everything y'all say. Um, we are having another meeting March 17th. They will be there. Y'all be there too. And, and I get I get that they're they were not to come, whatever it may be. You know, but the thing about it is that they should be able to go collectively and talk to the association government and ask why. I I agree. You know, why do we need to to, to that? I, I was just trying to help an area that I care about. I don't have a role. I have no buddy. I'm just the, the guy trying to help out. Yes. Hi guys. I'm Mark Manuelli. I own Brass Monkey. I'm I'm here. I've been here for a few other meetings. And there are some other bar owners here currently, restaurant owners, so I'm not going to hijack the whole meeting, but I'm here if you want to talk to me after. I printed up something that kind of has our bulletin points for our policies. We're probably the strictest on the strip, but I will say, even though I own a business, I do agree with a lot of stuff that you guys are saying, because if this was my neighborhood, I wouldn't want it. So I'm here and I've been here talking to Parker, Larkin, what can we do as business owners to help reduce this issue? We're not going anywhere. You're not going to go anywhere. Let's work together. So I'll be here. I'll stay at the end and we can talk. If anybody wants one of these bulletins, I will be happy to give you one. And then you, and then I should probably take one more and pass it. I got a question for the chief and the sergeant up there. I know that with uh, liability issues, that uh, you know a lot of people want have officers in your um, in the bars and stuff like that. But from liability uh, uh, issues, it's not practical. And uh, is there any kind of program that? SAPD can uh, bring to the full, uh, to the front uh, on how um, the bar owners hire security and everything, and what the what standards uh, that they're hired for that they operate levelly across the board and uh, make it safe for the bar owners in liability. And, you know, once 
drunk asleep, leave, because I have I have them in my front yard. And uh, I used to do one thing, being law enforcement, and now it's not worth my time. You know, because uh, they eventually are gonna do something and are gonna get hurt themselves. And so, uh, but what type uh, uh, of information that from what I'm listening to, people wanna feel safe in this area and people don't feel safe in this area because of the drunks. Now it's not Mark's fault or it's any other bar owner's fault. It's the people that are coming to get drunk and blitzed out of their mind and then they bring the issues, you know, to your department because you have to deal with these people and you get officers hurt. And it's a shame we don't can't you, you can't make a, a magic wand that oh I'm sorry for saying like this, but uh, oh you're a stupid person. Oh you're oh, you can come in. Or you're a, a, a dummy. Or you're that, or you're that. You know, there's no way. And it, it, it's like any, uh, how can you make it easier for the bombers uh, to, to, to bring in people that it's gonna make the neighborhood feel safer? Uh, is there any program that you can think? Because I know that there's a lot of uh, I'm glad you asked that question because I do have an answer for you. <clears throat> Let me first introduce a couple of people. We got Eric Walsh back there, city manager, assistant chief Jimmy Reyes, Sergeant Moscoso. Moscoso, I guess most of you know him. He's a safe sergeant. And over here, where she goes, Maria Villa Gomez. Uh, she's the deputy city manager, and she, she's my boss. So, <clears throat> uh, and also, and she's gonna probably hit me when I get close enough to her, but retired assistant chief Geraldine Garcia is sitting over there uh, in the audience. She's on the, the uh, pastoral board at the, at the uh, church, right? So um, let, let, me, let me talk about a couple of issues and I'll get to your point in a minute. Can we pull the, can we pull the, park, can you pull the PowerPoint back up on, uh, on the SAPD slide? I've got some comments I wanna make about that slide. So, um, more proactive patrolling rather than reactive, and I'm not sure where that came from, why you think that we're just reactive as opposed to proactive, because I can show you stats to show that we are proactive. So that's number one. Number two, four to six officers don't ch stand a chance against 5,000, 10,000 patrons. Neither do 10, neither do 20 stand a chance. There's two issues here as I see them. And, and y'all can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. There's an order of maintenance issue in your neighborhoods which started this off. The drunks, the noise, the beer cans, the urinating in the public, the sex between the cars. That's one. Am, am, I, on, am I on target? Yeah. The second one, the second one is fear of violent crime down here on the strip. So those are two issues as I see them. One of the ideas that I had, and I discussed this with a former council member, was that, let me preface this with, with, by saying this. Police aren't necessarily going to arrest these issues away. It's, it's not gonna happen. There's too many of them, there's too many people, there's too much alcohol, there's too many guns. It, so police are not gonna solve this problem by ourselves. But, tell me if I'm wrong, the more police you see down here, the safer you would feel? Yes? Yes, yeah, I would mean. so, so we put street crimes up here for quite some time. Street crimes is a violent crime prevention apprehension unit. It's not meant for order maintenance problems in neighborhoods, it's a waste of a resource. But I put them up here anyway because I knew it was important to y'all. We've got four officers 
that were Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Are they on Sunday night, Jimmy? And Sunday night. Four officers. That's a drop in the bucket. It, it, it's really, for, for what we're all trying to do here, it's really ineffective. But it's all we can put up here right now. But let me put this in front of you. So, and, I, and, and if the, this needs, needs to get back to the bar owners. And I brought this up to the previous council member and he was unelected and it went away. But suppose every bar on the strip was required to pay into a fund to hire security. And I, I, I mean, I don't know how much money they could throw into the kitty, but I'm sure it would be quite a bit with all the bar owners. So even if each bar owner hired one, it would be, and what are these, 17? 17 police officers, is that it? So again, the more officers you, were, you see up here, the safer you will feel. So my push would be to have to, and I don't know how we do this, but to require or volunteer the bar owners, you gotta chip in and, and provide security. Now, we are not prohibited, I'm getting the shake of the head back there, tell me why. Are you a bar owner? No, but because it's not the government's right to tell businesses what they spend their money on. Okay, I'm cool with that. But, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have to skip okay. in and, and do the parking garage too, because the parking yeah. on the street has gotten too big. And, and, and you know what? You can't get emergency vehicles down there. And the construction doesn't help any. No. And that doesn't help any at all. Thank you for that. I hear you. I, I, I live right up the street. I know. As a matter of fact, I don't come this way to go home because traffic's too bad on St. On on Mary's. But let me, let me say this, that we are not prohibited from working for the bars. We are prohibited from working in the bars. We're not here to enforce house rules in ABC establishments. But we can work outside. And there, and there are officers who do that around the city right now, just not inside. But there, there needs to be an amalgam of solutions to fix this, because we can't do it. And I'm not gonna blow smoke in here and tell you we can, and tell you everything's gonna be all right. But we will work. Oh, here's the other thing. So I wasn't aware that someone had suggested sheriff's deputies work here um, off duty. I wasn't aware of that and I'm not, I'm not uh, in favor of it. If we're gonna have officers here, it needs to be SAPD. I don't like to mix and match police departments because standards are different, supervision is different, protocols are different, and I don't wanna be in that, in that situation if something were to go wrong here and, and we've all gotta to come together. It, it doesn't happen that easy when you've got two different jurisdictions working here. So if there are to be other police officers or police officers working off duty, in my opinion, it needs to be SAPD. And we don't want to be cut out of that. So that's my, that's my, uh, does everyone know, I'm sure you probably do, does everyone know how the murder occurred the other night or last week, two weeks ago? I'm getting some no's. So this is, this is what happens 90% of the time across the city, everywhere. Just like the one up on, on Blanco and Mariposa the other day when uh, an elderly the guy was shot and killed in his house because there was a shootout across the street between 15 and 16 year old kids. So 2.15 in the morning, a uh, few people are standing outside the bar in the parking lot and one dude looks at this girl and her boyfriend doesn't like the way he looked at him and he goes and gets a gun and comes back and kills him. That happens all the time. And the, and the rhetorical question I'll ask you is, how do you stop that crap? How do you stop this? That's exactly right, you can't. Well, I, 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 control. 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 well let's, let's, not, let's not talk, I mean, that's not, that's not gonna be the solution here, gun control. There, there's a lot of guns out there, and there's a lot of people out there who shouldn't have the guns that are doing this crazy shooting. I guarantee you, that guy who shot and killed that guy last week, or two weeks ago, did not have a CHL, and he was not carrying legally. Yes, ma'am. How about some publicity? How about getting this in the paper, on the news, everything? How about people knowing about this, and it'll stop? Because people will quit patronizing. 
in the night in 1990 or whatever the other one happened, it went all over the place and the strip died. People knew. I told my son, "You're not going back down there." People are desensitized now. Well, no, but it happens all the time. Don't quit. But you know what? It is ridiculous. Just the fact that we're standing up there saying we need a small army. Let me let me take this back for a second. Let me, let me take this back for a second. So let, let me just do a check in with the crowd. Okay? So raise your hand if you live in Tobin Hill. Okay, that's good. Put your hands down. All right. Now raise your hand if you've lived in Tobin Hill less than five years. Okay, you can put your hands down. Let raise your hand if you lived in Tobin Hill for ten years or more. All right. Raise your hand if you've been in Tobin Hill 15 years or more. Okay. I just wanted to check in on that. So you all remember, so a lot of you remember that, that murder that happened in the 1990s. That murder happened at Cottles O'Brien's restaurant, right? My dad built that restaurant. My uncle, who also named Marty Bravo, he was managing that restaurant. There was, somebody stole a woman's purse and uh, the boyfriend or the husband tried to stop them and the, uh, the guy pulled out a gun and shot him dead right there. And then the business died on the strip. And I, so I remember that. I was, you know, I was like right out of high school back then. I didn't live here. I lived here in San Antonio, but I, I didn't live in this neighborhood. But I remember the effect that it had. I remember the effect that it had on the restaurant that my uncle managed and on the, the, the neighboring businesses in this area. and. And I've talked to, we had a town hall with just the, the St. Mary Strip business owners a couple months ago, and we did a check-in with them. And a lot of them were concerned about that. I know Mark was concerned about that. There were several others that were concerned about that too. And, and there has been publicity about the recent shooting, right? There's Zach over here with the news. Every time there's a murder, he calls me and he wants to interview me, right? And it's, there is, it's, getting publicity. We haven't seen the activity die after that, though. And I'm not sure what's wh why. I'm not sure what's different. I can, I can tell you why it hasn't died. You, you may have people who aren't going to go to a restaurant because there's a violent act that occurred there. I get you, Richard. You, you may have a rest, uh, people not go to a restaurant because of that. But when you got 20-something-year-olds coming down to a bar, that, that ain't stopping them. They don't care. Richard, what do you got? I have one pretty strong neighbors This is the biggest, biggest, biggest gathering we have had in Token Hill. I'm a resident of 54 years in this beautiful community. I'm a little disappointed that we had a state of the state officer lead this discussion. This this problem that we have, we know what the problem is. It's alcohol and the content of the people that go there. Now, Chief, I, I, you're my buddy and my buddy, but the last meeting we had at the Eco Center at San, San Antonio College, you were presented with the same thing you're being presented today. And nothing has happened, Chief. We were, we, we told you, you yourself presented a young man, Ramirez or Rodriguez, Captain, and you said he is formulating a plan to, for St. Mary's protection. Chief, all you have to do is get police officers in the presence of St. Mary Street, and this will be minimized. I mean, here we have a state representative. Do we have Texas Alcohol Beverage Commission here? They're the laziest group of people in the state of Texas. And they're not, they're, you know, we had a 20 year old kid drop dead on, on French Street. 20 year old because he was drunk. And who's to blame for that? You know who? The little waitresses and the bar owners that don't care. They're looking at the dollar bill. And they don't mind it. I mean, you can see a person that's half drunk and they're still serving more, more drinks. That's it. And, and you know, what I need for you, Chief, is to get me more police officers on St. Mary Street, close the food at 12 o'clock, send them home. Yeah, let me ask you, 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 you a question, Richard. Yeah. Yes, sir. Where am I going to get more police officers? All right, Papa, you got the city manager, you got Maria here. You got the funds. Don't tell me you don't have funds for police officers. Yeah, I go, I go to the restaurant and I see five police guards eating there. <laughs> I 
don't like you anymore, Richard. <laughs> I had a, a couple of comments. I think I think it's not going to be just one thing. I think it's going to be multiple. I think um, not allowing cars to park on the roads is one because then they will have to ride share. I suggest that each bar has a bouncer that has a device that checks for weapons because if they can't go to their car and get it and they're checked at the bar, then they're going to leave it at home. Um, that probably won't stop the alcohol, but I'm curious, um, I've traveled to Utah and anywhere you go where you drink alcohol, they scan your ID. So if you get into an accident or you commit a crime, your information is documented at that bar. Yep. Is there anything that we're doing to maybe implement a similar system? Well, we we being the police are not doing that. That would be left up to the bar owners to have that sort of ID check. Thanks. Hi, my name is Nikita. I've lived in this neighborhood for 37 years. Um, and I'm like really happy to see all of y'all civic-minded people. But I want to I wanna say something here. You mentioned something about homelessness and crime. And those things are directly correlated with people who are struggling to survive. And we are on the precipice of one of the worst financial you know, crises of our time because of COVID. And if we shut down this whole economy, that puts more people out of a job and more people homeless. What we need is affordable housing and free public transportation, which would help, you know, drunk driving. But I think having compromises here, I think the bars have brought some great things. And thank you, Diego, for being such a great moderator here. Like, but there are some, you know, there are some residents here that don't think that the bars are a negative thing. I, I worked at Joey's while I was going to college. This is an important area to me. I went through my whole top of land. I grew up there, five years old. This place has importance. Hey, Richard, I met with a, a, a large community group, I don't know, maybe, maybe three years ago, two years ago, um, somewhere right around here, uh, north of St. Mary's. And we came up with a great plan. Uh, we executed, we, we ran it by the community before we executed it, we got suggestions from them. I don't know if anybody was in that meeting. Um, Joe Frank, where's Joe Frank? That, was it how, two, two, three years ago? So we, we executed that plan and we, we had all kinds of stats, arrests, tickets, and you know what changed? Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. So, you know, you, we've got two worlds here. We've got the world of the of the residents and we've got the world of the bars. And when those two worlds collide, this is what happens. And and again, I, I, I don't know what the immediate solution is, except to try to make you feel safer by having more visible cops there. And I will say it again, and Richard, I love you like a brother, but I don't have I don't have more cops to throw up here. I just don't have it. There there are there are other areas of the city that are having the same kinds of problems you are, but even worse, violence. But, but you told me yeah. that Captain Rodriguez or Ramirez was formulating a plan from the last meeting we had. We hadn't heard anything about the plan. The I don't plan. even know who Captain Ramirez is. Rodriguez, you, you but I don't know who Captain Rodriguez is. You introduced him at the Eco Center when we had the last meeting. You got the wrong name then. I don't know the name. I, I, okay. I remember he was sitting in the back in a, in a dark suit and, and you introduced him as the new captain. Richard, you're a little bit older than me, I think, but I think but, I but my memory's going too, so I don't remember that. Boy, I'm a little surprised just, that you just a quick a quick side note to recenter. Um, I think the chief and you guys have some good suggestions. I wanted to point something out here. The second to the last bullet point is exactly what the chief recommended, which is people pulling their money together to hire off-duty. I don't think it matters to them or anyone else if it's if it, if it matters to you that it's SAPD. I don't. I think that's a detail. But that that second to last bullet point is the bar owners pooling their money together and being responsible for hiring off-duty. In this case, would be SAPD officers in significant numbers to patrol not just the strip 
a radius that is, is to be determined. So the more suggestions you guys give, the more we can do. But again, this, we're just trying to get to a point where we can start tomorrow with something better than right now. I don't think these questions are for me, but. Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah, start some tickets and down the Yes, those of you who know me, I, I run the state well. I'll, I'll work on that for sure. Uh, yes. I think we all need to give Richard a hand, who is one of the best architects in San Antonio, who has designed a bunch of the buildings all over our state ministry. My name is James Sykes. Uh, my office is actually adjacent to Demos. Uh, my wife and I, about 10 years ago, moved to the Hill neighborhood, specifically I'm 38 years old, to live by this amazing nightlife. And I think year by year, it has gotten better and better with great businesses like Sings, Vietnamese coming in, Slackers coming in, great food to the neighborhood. And you know, for people in our generation, this is when people want to move to the urban core. You know, it's training to the brewery. I think the businesses that are on the North St. Mary's Street, although there's a little bit, this is why we're here. I think they really do a lot to, to make our, kind of, our city better. And uh, I think we should be working with business owners in the neighborhood as someone who lives in the neighborhood to work this third. Okay, I'm going to do one, two, three, and then turn to this side. All right, so. Well, thank you. I'm Geraldine Garcia. I'm representing our Lady Sorrows Church. I'm on the pastoral council there. Sir, first of all, thank you so much for being here and facilitating this for us. I don't know how that happened, but here I am. Okay. No, 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 this is great. The one thing that I wanted to say, and I was anxious to say this, is that the biggest thing that's not on there, and if you can get the people to agree to this, is that they they go with their certificate of occupancy and their places. You can only have 15. It will sound yeah. that, including with the red stuff, I think that would be a tremendous help. That they, every certificate of occupancy gives you a number of people that can be in there, and if they will say yes, we will do that. The bar owners, then I think that's something that that will make a, a tremendous difference here. And thank you again, sir. Sure. I, I, I'm not sure how I received the the, the the bar owners rep, but um, I know that that on the 17th there is going to be another meeting, uh, and I suggest. I, I know they're going to be there. I suggest all of you are there because the more we can get people to actually talk to each other, I think the more progress we can make in a short period of time. If you want to keep waiting for months and months, fine. But if you want things to happen tomorrow, then let's start moving and then the bigger scale issues we can deal with. So I've got you and then you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. um, I've lived here for about two and a half years. Uh, so far, I live actually a quarter mile up on East Russell. And over the course of the last two and a half years, I've seen, like when I first moved in, there wasn't really that much overspill of people going up the road. Lately, every weekend, there's drunks in front of my house. I mean, they're spilling a quarter mile up the road, right? All the way to McCullough, right? I saw last weekend, there was a guy who got run over because he was so wasted trying to cross McCullough by himself. You know, so it's definitely getting worse. And, you know, I'm really glad you came back to the slide, actually, because I was wondering, to me, no drinks under three dollars on weekends. That's weak, right? We should be at least five dollars. Yeah. 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 Not only that, but you guys need to start charging cover. If you have five to ten thousand people coming per night, you're making the money. You can do it. You can start charging cover. You can, you know, even even if it's just for guys, charge guys ten dollars to walk in, five dollars to walk in a bar, and five dollar minimum on the weekends for drinks. I, I don't know how to run a bar. You gotta make it more expensive. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you if that's a good idea or not. The only thing that I can say is that when I asked residents and bar owners what led to bad nights, they said dollar wells. So if if the if the price point is wrong, that's something to bring up. I I. I I'm a bad lawyer and a DJ. I don't know how to do this. So <laughs> that might be a great idea. I don't know, but it's it's worth the conversation. Yeah, um, we'll get back to the questions, but I just want to address this. So I, as your representative, your city council representative, what, what our office has done to date is um, we've stayed in close communication with your neighborhood leadership, right? And we've heard about issues with people you know who park in the neighborhoods they go they drink they have some of them have too much to drink and then they go back into the neighborhoods and that's where a lot of problems occur right so what we've done is um this the city has engineers who are on retainer and we've secured uh, a contract with one of them to do a parking study 
And you can see the map right over there. That's the first area that was proposed. I've actually asked them to, to expand that area a little bit. And we're gonna do a parking study and we're gonna look at where are the opportunities. If, a, if, a, if one of your streets is narrow enough, you can do no parking on that street. If it's not narrow enough, then what you can do is um, you can do residential only parking during limited hours. And so we're gonna get, you know, we're gonna get more input. We already, I've already met with that engineering firm. Uh, your neighborhood leadership met with them last night to get their input. And um, we're gonna, we'll, we'll bring them here on the 17th so they can get input from the broader community. And you all can all weigh in on that and we can hear from you. And they're gonna, the, the city manager and his office has agreed to fast track this study so we can get it done quickly and we can see how soon we can implement whatever it is that we come, you know, that we come to a consensus on based on what you all want. Um, and so we'll see how quickly we can implement something to that regard. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I would say to bring it back to parking too, because I believe that like Parker's presentation says, most of our issues start, start with parking. Not only the violence that's happening, but you brought up public safety issues too. Um, I had to leave um, late in the night for family emergency, and it took me six turns to get out of my, my driveway. Um, and it was not easy. And nightly, I see fire trucks and ambulance going down the street multiple times a night that are sandwiched in by cars. And I can't imagine that there's not, um, you know, issues that happen nightly with people needing emergency services and all the cars on the street. And, and it all goes together. It all ties together with the violence that we're seeing, with the vandalism that we're seeing, um, and the trashing of our neighborhood that we're seeing. And so I want to know how we get this parking done. I'm glad to hear there's a study going on, um, but that's the most important issue to me, and I want to know how to push that through and how to make that happen. I have just got uh, two points. One for our for our chief. If you have an off-duty officer who is not working in the club but outside of the club and crawling around, if that officer, it becomes abundantly clear that people are coming out of a bar completely obliterated, falling down time. Can they not turn around and make a report to TABC? Yes, they could. Okay. Absolutely. Let's start okay. happening. Okay. And then my, my other comment is on our parking study. And this is a little frustrating because we have been talking about this parking lot for years. We have actually been staying up at night on our streets counting cars, and I know that we send you those numbers every single Monday. I don't know, when you have two and three and four hundred cars going down the street in a single night where there are 30 houses and one side you can't park on. I, 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 I hope your, your parking study doesn't take another couple of years to tell us that a lot of these residential streets simply can't have parking. Yeah, let, let, me, let, me, let me say this, and you're probably not going to like me for saying it. <clears throat> I am not so convinced that parking, putting up parking signs is going to fix this. We have, we have tow trucks stationed on the nice set <clears throat> that we have officers working here, ready to tow. And we tow, and we tow, and I could give you the numbers of, <coughs> excuse me. I could give you the numbers of tickets that we've written, the cars we've towed, and has it fixed anything? No, it has not. And I want to give you these numbers, <clears throat> just, just for FYI, since we're talking about TABC. So in the past few months, TABC certified bar checks, 31. Noise nuisance meter checks, 23 checks, three violations. TABC administrative violations, 237. Over-serving operations, 
Five checks, three arrested for over-serving. So we're hitting all corners of this. Nothing's having an impact. And, and again, I don't think that putting out more parking signs or restricting parking is going to stop it. And, I, I, and I, I, I don't mean to bring that bad news, but that's just my feeling. Let me just touch on parking one more time. Um, we're moving in that direction. I, and when I sat down last week with city staff, I said, you know, I've been in office just over eight months. And I said, I want this done in the first year that I've been in office. And they said, well, councilman, you know, we can have the study done. We don't know if we can get all the signs and get them put in place, whatever their supply chain issues. You can't get anything more than stop signs right now because of the supply chain issues or whatever. And I said, what about outside vendors? And they said, okay, we'll look at outside vendors. But that is my goal to get this done because I've heard from so many of you that that's what you want, that's what I'm working towards. And I'm, I'm pushing staff, I'm pushing the engineering firm to fast track it. Who hasn't spoken yet? Back here. Yeah. Get you next. Get you. I know. I'll keep it short. Uh, I live. I live here for the past uh, five years. I love the strip. I like drinking on the strip responsibly. But I agree with some comments that uh, alcohol consumption and excessive drunkenness. People like that at the time. But excessive drunkenness is kind of out of control. Just the other day, uh, I was at a bar that's not known for being crazy, but we had to buy an Uber for someone who was stumbling, didn't even know his own name. We had to buy him a, a Uber to get home. I want to give credit, uh, sounds weird because Brad's wants to party's hard, but I do know that their bouncers will keep a lot of crazy people out. I like the idea of holding drunk people out of bars, that all the bars on the strip should have a stricter uh, requirement for people getting in. And uh, Chief just mentioned TABC violations, and you know, we have laws, just like with noise ordinances, we have laws, we have ordinances. Um, if those ordinances are being broken, and the cost is too low, how do we increase the cost? Can the city take uh, those reports from TABC and amplify the fees or, or, or penalties for violations, repeated violations of over serving or underage drinking? I don't know, but uh, excessive drunkenness is the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A few points. One, I don't know why we're still looking at this one slide. Hold the mic up. Hold the mic up. I don't know why we're still looking at this one slide that the state representative put up. I think the answer really is on Parker's probably first or second slide. The parking, I disagree with the chief. Uh, he started off by explaining how the murder happened last a few weekends ago. You know, he said he went and got his gun. How many, where did he go get it? Park. So if you don't have parking on the street, or if you don't have parking, where are they going to get the gun? Yeah, most of the bars like Brass Monkey. What do you? What security do you have? Wands, uh, hats, pat downs. That could that could be contained, but cars by far, I think, are where the guns are stored. And if there's an issue, that's where they're getting. I think you would agree with that. They're coming from the government. If they're taking an Uber or Lyft, they're not going to they're not going to come to the bars with a gun. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It's an altercation, right? They get too drunk, but what do they have in the car? A gun. So I don't want to get into gun rights or anything like that. So practical, practical, uh, you know, way to address this. And I think that slide says it all right there. And I, I really think that the most of the community the people that live, you know, in Tokyo would agree with that as well. Seven o'clock in the city. Well, um, I, I live in this neighborhood, and I have to say I'm absolutely against any parking permits, and I'll fight anything I possibly can to make sure they don't happen because I know what that's going to do. Like you said, people come down here, they park their cars. How do you think people are going to go to these businesses? Most of these people that are going to these businesses drive down here in their cars, as we know. I don't want to kill all the businesses for, I know this might sound a little cold, but for a very statistically small amount of violence when you look at the number of people who are in 
You can laugh all you want, but the numbers are statistically true. If you count the number of people here compared to the number of violent incidents, it's a very, very small percentage, far under 1%. And we should not punish... We should never punish every single business on the street, perhaps with almost inevitable closure, just because of that few individuals that are mad. Uh, I'll, I'll have Mark come up here. Uh, so I want to point out that the North St. Mary's Business Association and the bar and club owners all support residential parking. And so the worry about killing their businesses, the businesses aren't worried about killing their businesses. They actually think it can help them flourish. And the owners I talked to didn't even know that was happening. I talked to at least five. No well, I'm talking yeah. every single one of them. So yeah, they we know it's happening as as a bar owner, you know, and, and we were worried with the construction. Yeah. You know, Brad Monkey, we were worried. This is going to kill our business with all this construction. I wasn't about it. I'm about the beautification of the neighborhood, but I was scared. Actually, it made no impact. So most of the operators here don't care if we get rid of the parking because there is no impact that we can see. I can't speak for every bar owner restaurant, but for someone that's been in the nightclub business for 21 years, I think that if we did have some areas that we weren't allowed to park, more ride share or some magic parking lot that we could put somewhere, um, I think that would resolve a lot of things. The, the, the things that you love and, you, and the bars and the restaurants you love, they won't go away. It's, it's about the operator, right? You have good operators and you have bad operators, right? So if you have a person that starts a restaurant, a bar, or another business and says, I'm not making enough money, and now I want to be a nightclub, that's a whole different animal, whole different set of responsibility. And you have to have a permit that states that you are a nightclub from the fire department. Every year I pay it $350. And it states that Brass Monkey is a nightclub. If you're a restaurant that all of a sudden throws a DJ in there or a bar, and now you're trying to be a nightclub, your learning curve of understanding that animal affects every single one in this room. You guys are the ones that get hurt for it because they don't know what they're doing. They're doing their best to learn and try, but there will be problems. You have to have the experience, especially in something in this kind of climate on St. Mary's. I think if they learned a little bit, I've offered my services, hey, I'll give you advice. I'll tell you what we can and cannot do, and then we could make it a little bit better. You know, again, good operators, bad operators. So that's my story. Okay, I'm going to respond to that too real quick. This woman over here with the, in the green has had her hand up for a long time. So um, yeah, we you know we had a, a, a mini town hall meeting with the business owners uh, just a few months ago, and we ran this by them. And I can say every business owner that came was okay with it. And there is. Um, you know, there is a local business owner that has a large empty lot and they intend to turn that into a parking lot. And so that's going to create some parking. Um, and so, you know, I have had people suggest that maybe um, the business owners get together and they lease the parking lot from at TriPoint in the evenings and run a shuttle service where you can have those little, those long golf carts and they just run up and down the strip and then, but everyone's parked over there. Um, so that's another thing that's been proposed that, that business owners can consider. Let's go ahead and go over here. And thank you for waiting patiently. Yes, I understood that this was supposed to be about the gun violence, and I haven't heard that much talk about the guns. I mean, it's too easy for these people to get a hold of guns. How are they getting a hold of guns? So that's not a municipal issue. I can hand that over to the state representative. <laughs> I, I, I am not going to make a causal connection here, but I will say to your point, sir, that we just passed permitless carry in Texas, which means that you can... We still. <laughs> I did, but the Texas legislature passed permitless carry, and what that is... You know, everybody just laughs about that, but there's people dying. I know. My point is... 
Permitless carry allows anyone now, if they're if they're if they pass their background check, they can buy a, they can buy a gun, keep a gun, open carry, keep it in their car without a license, without training. It's just you pass the background check, you have the gun. It's in the car, it's on your person. That's it. I'm not saying that that's the reason why this is happening. I am saying it certainly doesn't help. That, that, and, that, and that passed and became law in September. And if you look at the back of your flyer, you can see somewhat of a lineup. Yes, ma'am. Would the city be interested in buying an empty lot and charging for parking? That would help fund some of these problems. I don't know if we would or not. I mean, that's something that we could, that we, we'd be happy to explore. If that's something that the neighborhood supports, then it's something we could explore. Hello, okay, thank you. First of all, I want to uh, second what the same lady here in the black said about the ongoing problem. Now, I have an, we have an issue with weight parking. And I want to know if there's anyone here from Carson Clients that can meet with me afterwards because I have a, we have a parking problem in a makeshift lot that was in the back of the paper tiger. I'll make a long story short. A house was raised, oil was pushed up against the back building and up against our wooden fence. After many complaints, that soil was moved. A trench, three by four, was right up against our fence a little further. Here comes a collegiate dump over the soil and into the trench, which is now right up against our fence. I've been back and forth with some complaints. I've gotten some calls, but I would really love to talk to someone to see what's going to be done with this makeshift lot. Our fence is done right into a ring, and a lot of other problems is going on there. So I'd really like to speak with someone if you're here from Code Compliance. We have Code Compliance back here. <laughs> what I've always wondered is I do adoration on Lady Grace till two o'clock, so I'm coming back this way and I see everybody leaving. They're all drunk. Why don't they have people, the police parked at, uh, at the Y or down at the post office and stop them. And, and you know, you cut down your drinking, if you start you know, pulling those people over and you make a lot of money for the city. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't even have to pull over the regular people. You just pull over the people that are cruising down my street a little red, 100 miles an hour. That's true. Are racing now? Where's the DWIs? Oh, go ahead. Let me, go ahead, go ahead. So, this is a pretty big city, right? <laughs> and there are bars all over this city, right? We got a lot. You got a lot here, there's a lot, of, a lot everywhere. We work the highways and our, our VWI unit, and every night they are packed into the magistrate's office doing processing drunk drivers. So, you get them here, you get them somewhere else. I mean, they're, they're gonna get caught for leaving here really drunk for the most part and but well we're not we're out on the highways so I mean I don't want to argue with you about where we should be we're out in the city and we make a lot of arrests should we come here and set up a roadblock can't do that against the law but I'll check with the DWI unit see if they want to hang out here <laughs> It's not about generating funds. It has nothing to do with generating revenue. That's not why we arrest people. I stopped a kid from getting in a car in front of my house. I don't doubt it. I said, you can't get in. And the guy, his friend started arguing with me. I went out my front lawn and said, you may not get in your car. I, and his friend was like, no, you don't have medical. You cannot get in that car. You're going to kill yourself or you're going to kill somebody else. And then the girl came and thanked me later. I didn't care. My husband was mad. He thought I'd get shot. I'm not going to let him. He couldn't even walk. You like this? You cannot drive. So I mean, that's not the only time that happens. I hear you. It happens. It happens a lot. I understand that. I understand that. 
How you doing? Uh, my name is Joe Butler. I'll be right here on Ryan Street. I moved here 46 years ago to a family. And it was a nice neighborhood back then. I grew up in the west side. I grew up with gangs, shooting, stabbings, and I got away from all that to get to a better neighborhood. Vegetable? All this shit's coming back to me. We got shootings every weekend. Somebody happy with a gun, fired a damn gun every weekend on Sundays. I see them, I see police officers, but then they don't stop them. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. And sorry, Chief, I know that because I know a couple of officers uh, got me upset because they come to you and says, well, it's up to my discretion, what do I do? What do you mean it's up to discretion? Is there a science? See the warning? Just, you need to do something. Yeah, you know, just don't sit there in your, on, your, on your car and decide, it's up to you what you want to do. Yeah, and that's not right because we are taxpayers. You know, you're supposed to be protecting us. Yeah, and that happens a lot with us. And I know we have a problem there. One police officer here that it's not very nice to the neighborhood. He even threatened me one time saying, you know what, you don't put trash. Oh, but that's that. before that, we put trash cans out in the streets to keep all those cars away from our neighborhoods. Two weeks ago, I had a young kid, 20 years old, passed out in the front yard. It's not the first time either. Yeah. I asked permission from this officer, can I talk to him? I asked him, is he whole or he says 20 years old? I said, where'd you get your drinks from? In the corner. I don't want to mention the bar, the corner. We well, stood there for an hour and a half waiting for the parent or a friend to come pick him up. I said, how come you get arrested? Public intoxication? You know, this doesn't happen. I mean, if you don't arrest these kids, you're going to continue doing this stuff. Yeah, they're coming to you. you know, I've had people knock down almost my doors, front doors, knock on my doors. I think that's things stolen from my front yard. I've had kids peeing in my yard. I have a grandson that actually peeing in the front yard. How, you know, we don't like kids peeing in front of you know, our yards with all this urine around there. You know, it's, it's not, you know, we have to, have to have some kind of protection from this. To me, all this falls on the shoulders of the bar owners because it's their customers. And I know because I have taken a TABC test. And one of the things from the TABC, uh, TABC, TABC test is that you stop or stop selling with belligerent drunks. Once they start noticing that they are way over served, you need to stop serving them. And this is happening. This kid, I mean, yeah, you, a lot of people, I don't know, uh, right in this group right here, it's so bad. Thursday to Sunday, it's not even funny. We're prisoners of our own houses at night. We can't go out there. Cars going 60, 70 miles per hour, loud music, boom boxes. Yeah. And right now, it's, it's, it's nothing to be done. We asked about speed bumps, and they said, well, they can't put speed bumps because the street's too short. Yeah. Uh, to me, it says it's, 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 it's embarrassing. For us, now they've been in this neighborhood. Yo, I'll be honest with you, I'm fixing my house to sell. I'm tired of this shit. I am tired of this shit already. Yeah, that's how bad it is. Yeah, 46 years in this house, I love this neighborhood, but now I can't stand it. I have to put a my house. Rick, we had somebody back here with their hand up. Hi, my name is Nathan Aaron. Uh, I live on East French Place, close to McCullough. Uh, we bought our house a little over three years ago. We did move down here because we wanted to be closer to some of the fun and to the and all that. Um, but we have seen things change pretty negatively, um, like a lot of people have been here for a really long time. Um, I was wondering, either anecdotally for some of the operators here or for the city, if they've noticed that there's been an increase in volume of people here that is also correlated to a lot of the issues that we're seeing, and if that's something that you can address, you know, um, we brought up occupancy limits and things like that. Has that been explored, discussed? Is there an ability to investigate going forward? Just wanted to throw that out. So, pre-COVID, we had um, 
a 40%, 21 in, to like 31. And the rest were older because we do 80s and 90s. After we could open during the pandemic, that went from 21 to 31, 90%. All the older people stopped supporting it because they were afraid to go out. And the younger kids just came in droves and they're fearless, they don't care. So COVID, weather, crime, they don't care and they're gonna come. So what that means for an operator like me, it puts another responsibility on my shoulders because I'm physically there. I DJ the 80s and 90s, I'm there, one of the DJs. So I'm there knowing what's going on. So I can see it. Um, so we are getting a, a bigger volume. And so we hired more security inside. Because of the shooting that happened, we hired two more uniform on the outside. My brother-in-law is a, a sheriff and it's like, hey, can you see if we can get people down here? And, and, and we can't. but. McManus, I definitely want a phone number or contact someone that we can hire SAPD to come down. I would be more than happy. I'd rather have the SAPD than the sheriff. So uh, I appreciate that. But like I said before, I won't take up your time. I'm staying after so we can have some conversations. Hello, I live on East Dewey, across from High Tones, and there is a building next door to that. I understand that the entire pie-shaped corner has been bought now by investors, and they want to make the white house, what they used to call the White House restaurant, into a bar. Is that happening? I try to send my personal feeling that I don't need any more bars across the street from my house. I've had poor quality of life since high tones opened. My dogs are harassed nightly. I get broken bottles thrown into my yard. I've been reported to the city because my dogs bark, because I have people at three in the morning putting their hands over my fence and trying to antagonize my dogs. So now I bring them in at night. Well, how's that gonna help me when the people come after the bars are closed and they're stealing from my yard because my dogs can't do their job. I find it very frustrating that we've been living in the, the neighborhood, we follow the rules, we park where we're supposed to park, we do what we're supposed to do, and we have people coming from all over the city that want to do things however they want to do it, and there's little to no consequence. There was a huge fight outside of my house, ended up in my yard, 12 people involved. One kid was getting pummeled by six others. By the time the police finally got there, I thought they were gonna kill him, it was bad and they did not do anything about it, except for disperse it. They didn't breathalyze anybody, they didn't arrest anyone, they didn't take any names, and that same night we had a drive <coughs> shooting, we could have been involved, but we'll never know. So then when I tried to call TABC to follow up, there was no record because no one was arrested. So as a homeowner and a person who actually called the police, I was not given the option to say, I want something done about this to where TABC is gonna have a record. I wasn't given that option. And I don't understand what I need to do to make my house safer. That is not the first bloody fight. And if they're gonna open another bar across the street, directly across the street from the house, where are they gonna park? Where are these people gonna go? And am I gonna have to stay up till three in the morning dealing with these people coming up onto my property? I don't think that's fair either. I pay a lot of taxes, huge amount of taxes. And I do not feel like I am being represented. I brought this up years ago when I was first having problems with high tones. And I was told the St. Mary's Strip is a unique part of the city. No one else has anything like this and it's not going to change. Well, here we are. It needs to change. Thank you. And he says here, she's our director of zoning and planning. Have you seen a zoning, an application for zoning change there for the White House to go from a restaurant to a bar? Is that the house that was directly behind High Tones? Okay. 
They did attempt to do that, I think. Um, they came through the community association for that. Uh, they were denied at zoning to turn that into that uh, because they were attempting to actually create a food truck court in that property and bring several food trucks onto that lot. I'll I just want to bring up a point that um, that might be something to look into. Uh, I've seen recently on, on on TV actually, and I went to YouTube and looked at some other videos, and they were talking about the Sixth Street in Austin, which has been there thirty years or something. And uh, of course, they've had a lot of violence here lately. All of a sudden, and all of a sudden, Austin is scrambling. They're going to be putting in uh, uh, designated areas where they can park ambulances and have law enforcement staged. And just having been to Austin before, I think they, they have many, many offices there every night. They close the street. And I really feel that in the future, as it was back then, that this St. Mary Strip would actually close on Halloween and things like that. And, and going forward, this is already bringing, you know, five or 10,000 people a night. It's gonna be way more than that. And it's, it's gonna get to where it's gonna be a, I just feel in the future it will be St. Mary's that close on Fridays and Saturdays, and you'll have to find another way out of the neighborhood. And uh, so that's something that might might be something to look into. Also, is how is Austin handling there because they have thousands of people every night, and, uh, and all of a sudden it's it's just as loud as it is here. And, mm. uh, it's it's actually expanding out into their city. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. So we actually have a new uh, policy, policy staff member in the District 1 office, and yesterday I asked him to start looking into what they do on 6th Street in Austin and find out you know, how many people they have uh, that are visiting the, that area every evening and how many police officers do they have staffing it so we can have something to compare it to. One thing I didn't point out is the District of Austin is now turning a business district. It's, it has nothing to do with it. He said he added to that, that that one difference, one key difference is that 6th Street in Austin is a downtown business district. Yeah, and you know, there's no fire lanes on St. Mary's Park. When, when there's a commercial area, there's designated fire lanes. And God forbid, you know, there's going to be a fire and 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 Hi there, um, Philip Brown. We uh, we live just on the edge of Monte Vista, um, two houses down from Bar Barrow, and we feel like kindred spirits with you guys because we deal with a lot of the same issues. Now, you had brought up that uh, a lot of this rests on the operator. There's good operators and bad operators. I would share with you that. Um, the owner of Barbaro has uh, been involved in violence with us. He was cited for criminal mischief. He also owns a lot of bars on North St. Mary's, and he's going to be your incoming president for your uh, for your owners association. This guy's scary. He's a bad, bad operator. I said that. I got a solution for you. Uh, let's, let's make sure we get to the people who haven't had a chance to speak first. <clears throat> I, I live in uh, Tobin Hill. I moved here two years ago. And uh, one of the reasons I moved here was because it was a vibrant neighborhood that I could walk to many things like restaurants and churches uh, within a 10 minute um, radius. Um, I also, I also saw the potential for the neighborhood. I, I saw a lot of row homes going up. I saw a lot of town homes coming up. I saw the, the beautiful pearl. I saw all this, and this is one of the reasons that I moved to this neighborhood. One of the things I don't want to see is I don't want to see a reversal. I want to make sure that all the all the conversations that have been had have been constructive, and I want to make sure that those are the takeaways that the constructive conversations are taking place. And that, I don't, I don't want to see the business owners negatively impacted to the point where they have to leave the strip and then we're left with barren um, space. Because what you're, you're seeing is you're seeing a lot of people moving in for a reason. 
um, because you're seeing the potential of this neighborhood. And you're seeing people, you know, row homes of color going up or town homes going up across from gasoline stations. Because they're, they're, they know that the prices of the neighborhood is going to increase. And it's, it's, it's increasing by about 20% in the two and a half years I've been here. So I just want to make sure that we're working constructively with the businesses. The last thing I want to see is vacancy. And then we see more homeless moving into that space. So I uh, just want to make that known. I, I do support this. I do support all the structural conversations that have taken place. I really appreciate the uh, great community church for letting us have a COVID dialogue here. Thank you. Good evening, my name is James Ward. I go to Our Lady of Sorrows. I live there at the corner at that retirement facility, uh, Magnolia and Kingsport, so you know where I'm coming from. As far as shutting an area down, not a good idea because once every day, Monday through Friday, where that school is, everybody comes to pick up their kids, that whole corner is shut down. You can't leave the parking lot, you can't get into the parking lot, you've gotta go find something else to do. As far as gunshot, I, uh, I'm right there at the corner where you can hear, I have sorority houses in the neighborhood, and you can hear gunshots two or three o'clock in the morning. You call 911, they'll check on it tomorrow when the sun comes up. Where's the gun? Uh, there are all kinds of problems over there. Good luck to you, you've got a big job. Thank you. I've lived in this neighborhood 52 years, and I've seen all the changes. And yeah, it's pretty bad when people are defecating in your front yard, threatening you, and then you even have bar owners threatening you and say that nothing can be done about it because I pay more taxes than you. That's pretty upsetting to hear people talk to you like that when you've been here 52 years and disrespect you like that. You ask any of my neighbors, anybody coming here acting like that, I stand up to them. I don't care who they are. I've heard people threaten to shoot me. Go ahead. You know where you know where I live. And it's pretty upsetting. But what I don't understand is a lot of these bars are still open. Yeah, back in the 70s, some of these places were open, but it was nothing like what it is now, the, the occupancy. I don't understand why the city allows them to be open when you have to have proper parking for your customers. If you have so many if you have if you have 80 occupancy, you have to have at least, what, 50 parking lots? That's why I don't understand why they allow them to still be open. All because of the tax money? Oh, let's, let's risk people's lives for that. You know, all of, our, all of us that live in this neighborhood feel threatened. Nice you can't even go out. And when I have a bar owner threatening me, believe me, that's pretty upsetting. And I don't understand why they allow these bars to be open in the first place. If you can't provide parking for your customers, you shouldn't be open. Regardless of how the city thinks about it or feels about it or tax money or whatever, whoever you have in your pocket, they shouldn't be open. Amen. Okay, well, um, on a different note, I just want to thank Parker for an incredible amount of work that he's done in a very short period of time. And, and, president, and I know it started with the president before him, but Parker has really stayed on top of this. And I wanna, well, I wanna, I wanna thank the chief of police for coming. I wanna thank all the representatives who are willing to show up. Um, this is a lovely neighborhood. It, We've lived here almost 30 years, and I really hope we can work something out rather than have a lot of people have already flipped houses, sold houses, trying to get away from this situation. And I just hope that doesn't, that isn't the way the neighborhood ends up going. Um, Cause it, it is a lovely hundred year old neighborhood. I'm not running from this neighborhood. I've only been here for two years. I'm not running from this neighborhood. It's the best neighborhood in San Antonio to live in. You, where you can walk everywhere. 
there are good businesses on the strip. There are good bars on the strip. I don't want to kill the strip. None of the things I propose are to kill the strip. It's to make the strip work better. It's to make the neighborhood work better. I want to be here. I want to die here. I don't want to die from a gunshot wound. Uh, <laughs> But I want to be here. I, my kid, I have three kids. I want to raise them here. I want them to go to Hawthorne Elementary. I want to walk them to school every day. You know, I don't want to have to walk past a vodka bottle or broken beer bottles or used condoms. Um, so I know that it's tough to tolerate what's going on and still have these conversations with the bar owners. But we have to keep have. We're, we can't just get the pitchforks out and force them to leave. You know, the best thing we can do is keep having conversations and understand that we want to be a good neighbor and we want them to be a good neighbor back. Yeah. Thanks. I think we're about to wrap this up. Let me say that I don't want to shut businesses down either, but I also want to protect your quality of life. And that's why we're here today. Um, I want to thank everybody who showed up. I want you to know that we put more effort into this than we have in any other neighborhood for any other town hall. Our office printed up a thousand flyers because we, we had heard from enough of you and we had heard from your neighborhood leadership and we wanted to make sure everybody had an opportunity to show up and, and you know share your ideas, share your concerns. And so we printed up a thousand flyers and we went with all of our staff and we went door to door leaving those flyers and the neighborhood leadership went and they, did, they printed out flyers and put them up as well. Uh, but it's really important you know, I, mean, I want to thank the police chief and Maria Villagomez and Eric Walsh. Um, I, I think it was really important for them to hear directly from you as well. And so this is a this is a great uh, beginning of us being able to let them know how important these issues are to you. That's going to make my job easier when I go back to them and say, "Hey, you heard directly from the community. They want to fast track this stuff, right?" And um, so we appreciate this conversation. We appreciate how respectful everybody was. Uh, I know that, that there are um, a lot of serious concerns that you have that a lot of you are very passionate about, but I think we kept it very productive. So I also want to thank the State Representative Diego Bernal for coming and joining and for the work he's been doing behind the scenes. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this back to Parker. Um, we'll be doing this meeting all over again, March 17th, um, right here in this room, six o'clock, St. Patty's Day. See if we can get the, I, I have asked the bar owners to attend that meeting. Um, I wanted us to be able to gather these conversations before meeting with them, you know, get your frustrations out. Is Thank you, Mark, for coming. I, I specifically asked Mark to come. Mark is, uh, you know, he owns, he probably runs one of the biggest operation on the strip, uh, and he always is open for conversation and has done several things um, requested by our street to to try and help um, with some of the problems, and uh, we just need more of those conversations with the owners, and uh, I think that we can improve everything. Listen, I think it's we've heard you tonight. And it's important to us, it's important to me, that you leave your understanding that we heard you and we understand your frustration. And we will continue to do what we're doing right now. As ineffective as it may appear, we'll continue to have police out there writing tickets, making arrests, but we'll continue to work on the long-term solution to the problem. Just want you to know that. Thanks.